So many years ago, I packed up my suitcase and I made it to the airport and got on a plane and uh, was on the plane probably about 14 hours and finally landed. And I got off the plane and I found myself in Japan for the first time. And I was incredibly excited because it was something that I had thought about for years and for, for a long time wanted to go and then kind of lost interest in it for a bit. And then a, a friend went and said, hey, you've got to go. So, so I went and the minute, um, pretty much the minute I got on the plane, it already started feeling like Japan because the, all the staff was uh, Japanese and the announcements were in Japanese. And certainly by the time I got to the airport, I felt like I had stepped into a different world and then you, you get off the airplane and then you take a, a long train to, um, to, into Tokyo. And it, it was amazing. Everything, uh, everything was different. Um, the, all the sounds, the, the way that people acted was very different. The, the smells in particular were very different. You know, the, just the, the smell of different food and, um, and, you know, and Japan is very meticulous. Everything was, was just um, very tidy. And I, I was especially struck, even if I went into a place that, that I was familiar with, like uh, 7-Eleven or Starbucks, it was, it was completely different. And I, I really enjoyed going to Japan. It wasn't all wonderful. At times I felt uncomfortable or out of place. Um, but most of the time, it was just really fascinating to be in this whole other world. And, uh, and eventually, I made a lot, of, you know, I went a bunch of times, made a lot of friends. And so it's, it's always a lot of fun when I go there. And, um, and a number of years ago, I was, I was thinking of going to Japan. And I was just thinking about how much fun and how, how inspired I get when I go um, to Japan. Or when I travel in general, and <clears throat> and I started thinking about all the things that I do when I go to Japan, um, and I, I realized that the, the the most notable difference was my state of mind when I was there. Um, now, granted, you know, most of the time when I'm in Japan, I don't have uh, work or a lot of work, certainly. So that that's different, but I have an openness. I have a, um, uh, I'm always looking around as if things are new. Um, I'm, I'm always looking for new restaurants and uh, new, new food to try or going to look at art or, or even going shopping or, or looking at clothes. Um, <clears throat> and as, a, as I was reflecting on all this stuff, I realized, well, I live in New York City, which is one of the most amazing cities in the world. And, and it occurred to me that everything I do in Japan, I can do in New York, but I just don't do it. <clears throat> in New York, I have my routine and um, I don't even go out that much. And, and when this hit me, I thought, wow, I can bring a lot of what I bring uh, to going to Japan. I can bring it to my everyday life. And it really, it really struck me and I started looking at the city in a different way. I started looking at it um, as if I was a tourist and thinking, well, if, you know, if I was in Japan, what would I, what would I do? And uh, so when I travel, for example, part of my day, I will spend, you know, just maybe going to a cafe or something like that, certainly something I can do in New York. But the other part of my day, <clears throat> I usually make it a point to find something to go explore. And I'm in that kind of open, curious, explorer state of mind. And I realized that was something that I hadn't been bringing to New York that often. And, uh, and all of a sudden I started engaging in the city in a different way. And I, it, I, it really became a process of rediscovering the place that I live and the things that I do. Now, okay, so for me, that really worked well. And um, the, part of the reason I bring this up is when I'm coaching people, very often I'll ask people what they want and what their goals are. 
And most people, you know, they they might want uh, they might want to get a better job, or they may want to get a raise, or they want more money. And invariably, if I ask somebody, <clears throat> and by the way, this isn't just me. This is this is something I've heard from a lot of coaches. If you ask somebody, what would you do if you had a, a, just a ton of money? The number one answer tends to be travel. And that's great. Um, and certainly, it's wonderful to travel. And there are many opportunities to travel uh, inexpensively and close to home. But the main thing is that when you travel, you're in a different state of mind. And that's something that we can all bring to any moment uh, without even spending money. It's just bringing that openness, that curiosity, that, that um, sense of looking at things uh, through a slightly different lens than we usually do. Um, <clears throat> I'm not in my usual environment right now. I'm, I'm visiting with a friend and it was it was amazing flying here. I I was I was struck by how it was like I could feel my routine kind of melting off of me and kind of this new rush of impressions. So here here I'm getting that newness by being out of my environment. But certainly again I'm struck with the the, the fact that it's really the state of mind that I bring here that I may not bring to my everyday routine. Uh, that's different. And I'll go so far as to say, if you bring that state of mind to different um, moods that you're in, it, it has the same effect. Um, I Recently, I heard a couple of people sort of complaining about boredom. And I, I, I'm sort of an equal opportunity person when it comes to emotion. And I find that any emotion, even boredom, can become a source of fascination if you're really present to it. If you really start to study it and get curious about it, all of a sudden it, it really transforms that experience. The only thing that makes boredom insufferable is if we bring boredom to boredom in a, in a, in a certain respect. Um, so sort of coming full circle in this long journey that, that we've taken just now, you know, I started with going to Japan and, and having this sense of like, wow, if I get on a plane and travel 14 hours, I can have this rich, wonderful experience. And then discovering, wow, I can bring that state of mind to my home environment. And then you can even take it to sort of a micro experience of what if you brought that state of mind to all the different emotions, pleasant and unpleasant that you have, and kind of be a tourist of your own experience. Um, I find, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to have a dull moment if you bring that openness to, to everything that you're experiencing.